Okay, uh, again for Raggy, uh, we are going to review the game that is, by most fans, arguably the best Silent Hill game in existence. And, well, you guessed it, Silent Hill 2. Okay, now the thing with Silent Hill 2, um, a lot of people do consider it the best Silent Hill game that has been created. Now, uh, this also has created a lot of influence in the uh, newer Silent Hill games that are made by people outside of the Japanese. Uh, because it is the only Silent Hill game to solely be based upon the psychological aspect of the town of Silent Hill. Now that's not to say you don't learn a lot about the town or the uh, cult or anything that lives there. It's just it's done, it gives the town a lot of history in this game. Uh, now you do play as James Sunderland, who I'm not quite sure why, but he's just he's very relatable. Uh, he's suffering. He's been suffering. He really can't get over the fact that his wife has uh, died of an illness uh, three years ago, and he receives a letter from his dead wife from Silent Hill, which was their special little place, their resort town, if you will. Now, in Silent Hill 2, they really did a lot of things that defined the franchise. Um, in Silent Hill 2, they do suggest the fact that the town itself still runs every day, normally, and that you have separate layers to the town. You have the foggy world, which transitions to the nightmare or other world, if you will. The other world in this game is very subtle. It has a much more kind of decay aspect to it. Uh, things falling apart. One of the things I did really like is in the environment, uh, especially in my favorite location in the entire franchise, uh, the Toluca Prison and that whole area, they, they do things where the room is rotated, and you'll see doors on the walls and such. Um, it just really kind of gives you an offsetting feeling. It really gives you kind of something's not right. Uh, something's wrong about all of this. Now, Silent Hill 2 Ultra also introduced a animator that has stayed in the minds of gamers for a long time, and that's Pyramid Head. Throughout this game, he really, he just torments or he causes pretty much anything bad that happens in the game. And he, he really works. I mean, when you first see him, though, it's great, because there's this gate there, and you just see this glowing red figure on the other side. I always thought that was a really cool way for the character, for you as the player, and as James as the character to first see Pyramid Head. Another kind of thing, that this game portrays is the fact that the town itself can draw people into the town that have blackness in their hearts or have done something horribly wrong or something along that line. It just it really touches upon a lot of aspects about the town itself as compared to the cult. And I think that's why a lot of people really find that Silent Hill 2 is their favorite. And also, Silent Hill 2 it just, you really relate to the character. Like I said, I don't really know the reason why he's so relatable. He, he just seems to be. Uh, the characters are all very interesting, although you can really tell that there's something wrong with each one of them. Angela is obviously the most obvious. Eddie, you kind of, a little later, you kind of start thinking, kind of, I don't know about him. But uh, Silent Hill 2, it really has good atmosphere. The characters are relatable. I do feel that, in a sense, Silent Hill 2 is the love story of the franchise. Let's just say it doesn't have as happy an ending as most love stories, though. Like, again, I really don't want to say that much, but I will say that I do really like the metaphors, the, the story, which really isn't all that complex. I mean, it has its layers. But as far as the actual story goes, as seen on that first layer, it's really not that complex. 
But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, nobody said the story has to be Star Trek or something. Anyway, it is a really good game. Not my personal favorite, but that doesn't mean I hate it or anything like that. I do really like this game. It's just, I felt that Silent Hill 3 was more to my taste. Now, there are a lot of things that I could talk about with Silent Hill 1, but like I said, this is a review. The characters are drawn out rather well for you. The story is plotted out very well. The locations are interesting with the exclusion of the apartment building. That one's kind of bland. But interesting things happen in it, so it's fine. Uh, it has some really... It has one really cool monster. The rest of them are very... Uh, feminine, in a sense, and uh, you don't really come across very many monsters in this game. Uh, this game also introduced the nurse that has become the staple for how the nurse looks or what the nurse is based off in all the other games. And uh, it's just a really good game if you've played Silent Hill or anything like that. Uh, and you haven't played this one, you definitely should play it. And if you don't play Silent Hill at all, maybe start with this one.